So continuing with our hip hop roots. So it says Dapper Dan's teenage house was moved from shoe shining to betting games, where he used his book smarts to earn thousands of dollars a day, even outperforming his mentor, the original Dapper Dan, who passed the name on to who passed the name to him. By his early twenties, however, Dapper Dan had been arrested for dealing drugs and used prison as an opportunity to get clean. While incarcerated, he began to write essays on Pan Africanism, and upon his release, he took a tour of Africa as a part as part of not as a part, as part of an educational program sponsored by Columbia University and the Civil Rights Organization and National Urban League. Becoming aware of unique takes on Western fashion during his time in Africa, Dapper Dan used this as inspiration in his Africanization of high end European fashion houses. In his words, I had been to Africa and they and knew that I could make the same things that luxury fashion houses rejected me for and to make it better. So he was inspired by Africa. So you cannot be, I would say, doing all this uh, Americanism and then, you know, uh, what am I even trying to say? Can't be doing all this pro-American stuff and then, you know, wanting to claim people who were pan-Africanists that doesn't make sense. Then going on, you go to, we're getting now into hip-hop aesthetics. We have the supporters of the Congo Lasap. We see, notice the bright patterns, and the bold, uh, bold and bright. Emphasis on bold and bright, and then we go over to the players' ball. Again, we see bold and bright. Somehow, through some sort of convergent evolution, it would seem, some genetic memory or something, both in Africa, even when wearing Western-style attire, we still see the bold and bright. We still see the, the flashiness. The fur coat is, you know, that's more of an American thing, but notice what these guys are wearing. Now, some would say that this is clownish and country. Nevertheless, You see what you see. The women there are basically supposed to be whores or hoes, you know, prostitutes. But anyways, you know, then once again, back to the Lasa, Lasap, bold and bright. what they have in the Congo and then we can close that out going to the Ga Adangme people again Bold and bright, bold patterns, bright colors. Now we're getting back into the roots again. To be the roots of hip hop fashion.
and bold and bright. Notice the the shirts. Anything more? It says Ebo, where's that at? Ebo traditional attire, especially for fetish, for festive events such as weddings, is bright. It's pretty bright. Uh, let me see. Pretty bright and colorful. The main colors are red, black, coral, gold, orange, and burgundy. Now, we don't wear uh, what, what they call wrappers where you wrap cloth around you we don't do that here in america maybe during slavery you might have done it but again you see bold bold colors this is actually from another tribe known as uh Ethic or Bibio, they're neighbors of the Igbo. Instead, we like, as African people, we like to have some sort of jewelry. In that case is coral. We see all the jewelry, the red, the jewelry, and so on. Uh, going over we can close this out go over to Versace Versace was popular in the 90s I ask why was it so popular in the 90s the Italian designer Versace then we see bold and bright all right. We like bold and bright. Migos. And the one who was shot, reincarnate if possible. But again, we see bold and bright and jewelry. In this case, it's probably gold or platinum. I don't know. Even getting down to some kings. Says this is Cuba Nguyen Mbuike III, king of the Cuba kingdom. We see the bold patterns. Looks like there's some red here. Red. We close this out. The Cuba cloth. which to me is similar to the Fendi that is now popular. Notice the colors and somewhat of the pattern. Especially, for example, here, and then we close that out, we go over to Fendi, the 
is interesting the clo the colors that they chose notice the colors although this is an F just notice the way they arranged it the colors and how they have the the S from Fendi like they seems to me purposely set it up this way so it would look somewhat like uh, the African Cuba cloth. Although I'm pretty sure that the people who are wearing it, the black people who are wearing it are not wearing it because they're trying to be Afrocentric. They're just wearing it because it's a status symbol. Now um, to bust the rhymes, and where he got himself in trouble, he said, well, should not have really gotten him in trouble, I suppose. But it says, I want to remind everybody that may not know how the origin of hip hop was started. The origin of hip hop was started by the power of black and Puerto Rican people. In case you need to be reminded, Buster Ryan said it cheered from the Coliseo de Puerto Rico crowd. A lot of motherfuckers, excuse my French want to try to gentrify our culture. Buster Rhymes credits Puerto Ricans and Blacks with being hip-hop originators. So now closing that out, we're going to the slave trade. That's important. We see that people were moved from Africa to South America, Africa to the Caribbean, Africa to North America, to what is now the United States. And this is showing the movement all through the Caribbean. We can close that out. We're going to intercolonial slave trade. It's just showing that people were brought from the Caribbean to what is now the United States. We see people going from Jamaica here over to Veracruz. We see people from Jamaica going all up into all up you know, down the East Coast. Uh, people going from wherever this is to, what is this, Puerto Rico. And so we see all this movement taking place. Something else that is important is the Colombian exchange because this is how we had crops from the new world such as potatoes which are from South America sweet potatoes which also came from South America going to Europe where they were then distributed to other places such as Africa and, you know, also, they were traded up into North America. So, anyways, we have bananas, this is old world, cattle, onions, citrus fruits, coffee beans, grapes, horses, onions, peaches, pigs, rice, sugar cane, and wheat. These are all from the what is known as the old world. Rice was important uh, in that it was introduced to North America and grown by enslaved people, enslaved Africans. Uh, tobacco, which was grown in North America and also in the Caribbean, was the mainstay of 
the American economy until cotton replaced it as the mainstay of the American economy. Closing that out. Guinea file. Some of these things are showing you these connections. Uh, the helmeted guinea hen or guinea fowl, aka Numidia miligragus, is native to countries in Africa, Savannah, e.g., Guinea, Nigeria, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so Guinea were first introduced to Europe back in the 1400s and made their way to America with the early settlers and slave ships. That's a guinea fowl. Close that out. Sorghum, this is something else that was brought over from Africa. A couple of generations ago, sorghum was a staple sweetener in the South. It was cheap, plentiful, and often went by the name of sorghum molasses. The thick golden syrup was used in place of pricier sweeteners, and those that have grown up on it are partial with an almost nostalgic attachment to the flavor. Uh, what is sorghum and why is the South so obsessed with it? So sorghum, again, this is something that is African. Let's see if I can find anything. It says the first sorghum arrived, true treats historic candy. The, the triumph defeats and ultimate victory of the sorghum syrup. The first sorghum arrived in the U.S. with ships transporting enslaved Africans in the early 17th century. They used the grain for feed, for bread, and puddings as a blah, blah, blah. Who cares about what they used it for? But it's something that is African. Close up that. Black Eyed Peas. This is something else that is African in origin. Let me close this out. Okay, so let's see. It's dealing with why people eat black eyed peas on New Year's. It says, originally brought to the United States from West Africa, the legumes proliferated in the humid. Let's say this is showing you uh, black eyed peas with some greens. Oh, somebody says, uh, says Chef Chris Williams of Lucille's prefers a black eyed pea salad for New Year's. Anyways, but anyways, okay. So, originally brought to the United States and West Africa, the legumes proliferated in the humid South. In West Africa, they are believed to be good luck charms to ward off evil spirits, thanks to the eye in the center of the bean. Okay, so blah, blah, blah. A few theories exist as to why they're a popular dish in New Year's cele ce celebrations. According to Modern Farmer, they may have been eaten by enslaved people when the Emancipation Proclamation went into effect on January 1st, 1863. The tradition could also be following the saying, eat poor on New Year's and eat fat the rest of the year, which refers to the idea that black eyed peas were food for poor people. Closing that out. We got to close this out. How did you see?
In West Africa, where black eyed peas are native and called cow peas, traditional religions have deities and spirits who possess human attributes, including favorite foods. On religiously auspicious days, followers ritually prepare black eyed pea dishes to please certain gods. Many West Africans also believe that the peas' eyes warded off the omnipresent evil eye. Black eyed peas are a festive food for non religious occasions as well. The Yoruba people of Nigeria make Iwa Ebeji. A black eyed pea dish including onions, pepper, smoked fish, and palm oil when they want to ceremonially, ceremonially bless twins. Okay, so we can close this out. Now this, this is going to be some images. This is Kalalu, which is Jamaican. We can close this out. And these are collard greens. which are eaten in the American South. Close that out. This is something called Ofe Ugu. So these are Ugu leaves. cooked by the, a green vegetable cooked by the Igbo people. And what you will find throughout the African diaspora is some type of leaf is cooked in a one pot meal. Closing this out. This is just a uh, suggested food pyramid. I can, yep, there it is. So, a strong emphasis on greens of some sort. This is just saying that greens of some sort. Uh, but yeah, that's based upon how uh, we ate, although tubers might be actually, maybe should be at the bottom and maybe the leaves in the middle, but anyways, but just showing you how everything connects and that will be all for now. Thank you.